WOI Television Newsroom, in cooperation with the Institute for Atomic Research and the Ames Laboratory of the Atomic Energy Commission, presents... The Hot Canyon. The second in a series of programs showing some of the atomic research done at Iowa State College. One usually thinks of chemical research being done in a laboratory not unlike those used in high schools or freshman college courses. But the coming of the atomic age and work with radioactive materials has brought a necessity for special laboratories with special equipment. Such is the case at the research center of the Ames Laboratory on the Iowa State College campus. Samples of highly radioactive material arrive at the lab in specially built lead containers from reacting atomic plants in other parts of the country. The containers, or caskets as they're commonly called, are made of two pieces bolted together, which eliminates the danger of harmful gamma radiation from the sample. A small aluminum thimble in the center of the lead cylinder serves as a case for the radioactive sample. The procedure for handling the radioactive or hot samples is set up by the health physics department under Milo Voss here at Iowa State. And each time the casket is moved, it is checked to see if any leaks have developed. Iowa State College and the Ames Laboratory are currently searching for an atomic fuel that would be as efficient as coal or oil. And it is for this type of work that the Hot Canyon was built. Some of the features of the canyon are similar to those found in other Atomic Energy Commission installations. However, much of the equipment used at the Ames Laboratory is specialized for the local work. This special area was designed by Ray Fisher. We felt the control of unauthorized personnel in the Hot Canyon area could best be accomplished by using only one door and signing in and out. The laboratory provides special coveralls, shoes, and radiation instruments for all regular employees with the locker rooms two floors above the canyon operations. The entire area is shielded by two feet of concrete. The safety of the worker was the primary concern in all of our planning. The wall around the stairway protects the worker from any stray radiation. Meanwhile, the health physics people give the casket a thorough check before taking it down to the canyon. Swipes along the joints are monitored with a Geiger counter to make sure the casket is not contaminated. After the container is approved, it's off to the canyon by way of the elevators through the cargo door. The, the casket is left on the dolly. Two men can easily pull it on and off the elevator. The security measures are mainly for keeping unauthorized personnel out of the classified area.
This is a special cargo door on the floor of the canyon, not normally used by personnel. The problem of ventilation in the sub-basement room was solved by keeping the canyon under a negative pressure, meaning the air pressure is slightly lower than outside. If there are any leaks around the doors or crevices, the air will rush into the canyon. A separate system brings filtered fresh air in through the ceiling, sweeps it down past the workers and away from the radioactive materials, and out through an elaborate system of air filtering equipment. This design eliminates any possibility of contaminated air getting outside of the canyon itself. An overhead crane takes over to put the casket where operator Ed Duell can begin his work. This is the focal point of the hot canyon, the hot cave. The steel wall between the operator and the radioactive sample is seven feet high and eight inches thick, and the windows are made of lead glass, also eight inches thick. Those round holes down on the right below the window have plugs in them and are used to put chemicals and utilities into the cave. These heavily shielded samples have to be hoisted over the wall. Some of the caskets will weigh up to 1,300 pounds. This one weighs about 400. The manipulators were designed by the Argonne National Laboratory and are called master slaves. They are actually mechanical extensions of the operator's hands into the cave. The master slave can handle weights of up to oh, about seven pounds, so each unit is used in conjunction with a 500 pound chain hoist. A lab assistant on the inside loosens the bolts on the casket, then leaves the cave before the top is lifted. Only mechanical equipment is used on the sample until it is subdivided into less dangerous units. The radiation monitor or Geiger counter shows what happens when the sample is exposed. This is a typical sample from the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, where it was bombarded in a nuclear reactor and made radioactive. The thin aluminum thimble is the same one used at Oak Ridge. Its cap is crimped on. And there's our sample, a small piece of metal. Looks harmless, doesn't it? Now this sample is going to be used for a whole series of experiments. So we put it in a plastic bottle and only take a little of it at a time by a drilling process. Drilling is a common way to get a small sample for analysis, but in this case, every chip must be accounted for because of its radioactivity. This little pl plastic bottle gadget is one of the many pieces of Hot Canyon equipment designed by Gordon Winders of our engineering group. The bottle has two compartments, one for the sample and the other empty. The hot chips are carried into the empty compartment as a drill is forced through the metal sample. The chips are small and contain only a small portion of the radioactivity of the entire sample 
and can usually be handled by more simple methods. For the actual analysis, the chips are taken to the next room, the dissolver laboratory. Although the radioactivity is much less than the full sample, it's still necessary to have some shielding. The operator is finished with his work as soon as the sample has been unpacked. His work has been strictly mechanical, and his health has been protected by the design of the equipment. But before he can leave the canyon area, he has to pass through the health physics checkpoint to make sure he isn't carrying any radioactivity on his clothing or shoes. The health physics people usually help in the survey for radioactivity. If the clothing is found to be contaminated, it's held for further examination, and perhaps condemned if it's seriously contaminated. If only a slight amount of radioactivity is found, a good laundering will make it usable again. Meanwhile, the sample goes on its way through chemical analysis, and the hot cave is ready for another sample and a similar procedure. Progress in atomic research is possible only with the help of special equipment. But despite the difficulties, the promise of material benefits in the atomic age holds the fascination of the scientist, and he learns step by step the secrets of the universe.